Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have another horror movie haul. I haven't done one of these in a long ass time. I did some movie hauls on other channels of mine, and uh, I don't think I covered most of the stuff on any of those. These might all be new things for any of you who are my usual viewers on those other channels that you hadn't seen me collect yet or hadn't seen me talk about yet. There are things that um, pretty much are things I've always uh, been a fan of, things I've seen at least once that I love deeply and wanted for my collection, but other stuff that I plan on rewatching sometime soon, like in the summertime or at the end of the year. Some stuff I've already reviewed, like the first one I'm going to show you for my stacks. And this is kind of broken up into a lot of different areas. The first chunk I'm going to show you are things that I got with Amazon gift cards for Christmas uh, from my dad, my grandparents, my mom, my grandfather, uh, everybody pretty much, my wife even, <laughs> her family. And I bought a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I bought a lot of non-horror stuff too, but I wanted to show you all the horror stuff that I did pick up first and foremost. All the non-horror, I won't even bother with this video, obviously, because it's a horror movie haul. And then after that segment, I have the Valentine's Day stuff. My mom, or my wife, not my mom. Oh God, the Freudian slip. <laughs> My wife got me a couple of cool things yesterday for Valentine's Day. I love my wife so much. I wanted to show you guys these things yesterday. I just didn't have the time. Things were very slim. I went to see my mom yesterday, too, and dropped off some flowers to her after I hung out with my wife for a long time yesterday morning and uh, exchanged presents with her. But uh, after that Valentine's Day segment, I have kind of random stuff I got from like a pawn shop and Hollywood video and a local store that I really love. So there's about 15 movies here, I think is what I counted a moment ago before I turned the camera on. So hopefully you'll enjoy the haul. Well, let's go ahead and get into that first portion, the Christmas gift card Amazon haul. Uh, the first one I already talked about in a video I did to kick off my Hidden Horrors YouTube segment um, playlist, whatever, called Dolly Dearest. This is the Vinegar Syndrome release. It's a movie that I loved deeply when I was a kid that I saw one night, very late at night, randomly. And it just stuck with me my, the rest of my life. I've only seen it like three, excuse me, or four times in my entire life. It's a killer doll flick, and it's a huge recommendation for me in case you haven't seen it. About a family starting a new doll business, going out to Mexico and trying to start it there and encounter some uh, possessed dolls that kind of get to their daughter a little bit. Really creepy film. I love it. I think it's fantastic and goofy and silly, despite it being called a child's play knockoff. It's not fair. Go see it. Go see it. It's all fully on YouTube, and I think you'll love it. The next one right here I've seen probably six or seven times at this point since I found it for the first time about probably six years ago, matter of fact, maybe five years ago. I saw this forever ago, and I loved it so deeply. It was one of the first ever found footage movies I saw that made me fall in love with found footage. I was never a fan of Blair Witch Project or anything like that. This movie scared the shit out of me, and it still creeps me out. There are iconic images in this that I can't wait to talk about when I review the movie very soon. That movie is called, and it's from 2014, by the way, 10 years old already, The Taking of Deborah Logan, a great movie, man. A scary-ass movie, in case you haven't seen it, too. About a lady with dementia or Alzheimer's and a documentary crew filming her on her last days. But there might be more than just a mental disorder of some sort being from old age. There could be more happening, and there seems to be. If you hate found footage, hear me out. Watch this movie. This will solve that for you. I showed my mom this years ago when I first saw it all the way through. The second time I watched it, I showed it to her and she loved it too. And still says to this day, this is one of the creepiest films she's ever seen. Super eerie, super um, iconic, like I said. My third one right here is another film that I love deeply. It's one that I saw about one time and then I rewatched it just recently to do a review here soon. And uh, this is a 2008 horror film, part of the After Dark 4 Horror Fest, which I loved back in the day. A lot of good stuff every once in a while, like Dark Ride and Grave Dancers, that I love both of those deeply. Childhood favorites, in my matter of fact. Never saw this one, started hearing about it a few years ago. Chris Stuckman is the one who got me to watch this, according to his YouTube video. That movie would be Lake Mungo, or Moongo. I always call it Moongo. It just sounds more mystical, uh, magical, whatever. This is about a family whose daughter's drowned, and uh, one daughter drowned <laughs> once upon a time. And uh, this is a fake documentary, or a mockumentary, as many people call it. It's not your typical found footage movie, but it feels real. If you showed somebody this movie and they had never heard that it was just a regular old mockumentary type, they would probably think this is real. It's terrifying. It is absolutely scary as shit, but it is a slow movie. It takes its time. The family are a little weird that it's about. But I love it. I think the ending of this film 
You need to watch this by, by yourself in the dark and it will put a chill down your spine. I'm telling you, it, it scares the shit out of me when I rewatched it recently. I knew everything that was going to happen and it still scared me. <laughs> So, this is utter nightmare fuel in case you haven't seen it. Huge recommendation for me. Can't wait you to can't wait for you to see it in case you take my recommendation. Like I said, we'll be reviewing that sometime soon, but for now I'm trying to get a lot of the newer releases out of the way that I've seen catching up on this channel and some big iconic stuff that I would like to recommend for the hidden horror segment of my channel. But uh, Lake Moon Go, excellent movie. This one right here I got also, and I love this movie. I love both cuts of the film, but especially the unrated cut that's included in here. It's a 4K and Blu-ray set of, and a collector's edition, supposedly, My Bloody Valentine, the 1981 original that I love so much. I love this slasher, one of my favorite top 10 slashers of all time, easily, without doubt. Scary, but like silly at the same time. Feels real, the whole small town setting feels real, the Valentine's Day setting is great, but let me tell you, I've been a hardcore fan of this movie for my entire life, since I saw it back in 2009, before the remake. And let me tell you, the way the transfer was so amazing for this movie was shocking to me. <laughs> you know, Blu-ray and 4K and all that, I don't even have 4K, I just watch the regular Blu-ray, but seeing movies that are old, like Halloween or like this, Seeing them done on Blu-ray or 4K is what you get Blu-ray or 4K for. Not shit like Man of Steel, that the DVD, the Blu-ray, and the 4K all look like the same damn movie. There's not that much extra detailing or 4K scanning that can make that movie look better than it already did on DVD. Um, <laughs> this looks so great. I mean, it just it's one of the most beautiful transfers I've ever seen, aside from Scream Factory's recent last couple of years version of Halloween. It is so beautiful. It almost looks like a movie that came out now. Truly. And they even enhanced the color of the reds in the movie to where they're just beautiful. Everything about it's beautiful. Um, I sent my mom screenshots and she even seemed to think that, you know, this is looking pretty damn great. There's so many bonus features packed into this. More documentaries, reunion stuff. I can't wait to talk about it. Or not talk about it, I guess, but finally get a chance to watch it. I rewatched this just the other day before Valentine's Day. And it was great. Even my wife was paying attention to it because she liked it so much. Um, it's a great movie. It's a great introduction to whodunit mysteries from the 80s and slashers and all of that. Uh, the unrated cut has so much great gore that was not in the original theatrical release. And it deserves to be seen by everybody. If you're going to watch My Bloody Valentine at all, both cuts are great. Watch the unrated one. That's the one I would recommend. Moving on to an art house uh, A24 style movie that I loved. I saw it one time probably two, three years ago, and I loved it. It scared the shit out of me. This movie is called Possum. I think it's from 2018, 2019. This is, again, more of an art house movie, not a typical linear storytelling, but it's not that confusing by the end of it. It pretty much explains everything you need to know in a great way. This is how I recommend <clears throat> making art house movies. If you're a person out there who loves to direct or write, you're doing indie flicks, whatever, if you prefer the art house style of storytelling. Make your movie like Possum. Possum kicks ass. I can't get anybody to watch it though. <laughs> I've tried, I've tried, I've begged, like my mom who's a big horror fan, to watch this because it scared the shit out of me and no one wants to watch it. I don't know why. Anyway, there's a man who has a very traumatic past and uh, he carries around a puppet in a bag that happens to have like spider legs and it's super creepy. A lot of the time you don't see the full image of the puppet. I don't want to show you the back of the box because I don't want you to see what the puppet looks like. It is right there. It's a big spoiler. Don't look at it if you buy the DVD. Just save it for the movie. But it creeps me out so bad, this spider-legged puppet, and uh, the performances in here are just amazing. I loved Possum, and I recommend it so highly. I had to get it for my collection. I think it was like seven bucks on DVD. I don't know. I, I couldn't believe it when I was picking up all this stuff for my Amazon gift cards. <clears throat> All right. Oh, excuse me. So this movie I saw a few years back, my wife and I, when I first really got into found footage, right around the time we got married. I think I saw this after I got married, when we were hanging out one weekend. Uh, we had just come back from our honeymoon, and I was trying to watch everything I could possibly find, and then this happened to be a thing posted on Tubi, I believe, and I put it on the TV. It's called Willow Creek, and I think this one came out in 2014 as well. This is a found footage movie, like I said, and it's more Bigfoot-centric. It is great. 
It's great. I love it. I think it's so fun. My wife loved it too. She was all into it. There's a particular scene that anybody who's seen the film will always remember this moment about a tent. And it's like a 10 minute shot of the two main characters who are going out to this Bigfoot themed small town to try to look for Bigfoot, to investigate some footage that's kind of popular in the Bigfoot community back in the day. I heard about it when I was a kid. Um, not a Bigfoot guy, not really a believer in Bigfoot, but this movie was so much fun. <laughs> and there's a scene involving these two sitting in a tent in the middle of the night when they hear some noises and some like whooping sounds out in the middle of the woods. And that shit had my butthole clenched, I'm telling you. My wife and I both loved this. She thought it was super surprising. The ending it was kind of a nice twist on what this movie was trying to do. Uh, maybe a little disappointing for the right audience, but for me, I loved Willow Creek. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal, and I really wanted to have that in my collection. So, there we go. This movie right here I watched last December in 2023. I had never seen it before, but I remember the trailers and stuff back in, what, 2005, 2006 when this came out. It's a remake of what's supposedly the first slasher movie ever from fucking normies who don't remember things like Psycho, Homicidal from William Castle, uh, Maniac, not Maniac, what is another one? There was Homicidal from William Castle and there was something else, but there's a lot of stuff out there that were already the slasher movie before you saw slasher movies, and Black Christmas is the one who supposedly popularized it. I'm not a fan of Black Christmas. Fuck Black Christmas. I've seen it one time and it sucked. I'll tell you that straight out. It sucked ass and I'm never going to like it again, but... I will review it eventually for this channel, probably this coming December. I, I haven't talked about this franchise, but I think I will. Anyway, this is the unrated cut of Black Christmas Remake. Now, I saw what I'm assuming was just the theatrical cut this past December on, like, Prime or Tubi or something, and I really loved it. It was so bizarre and wacky. It was such a great modern slasher from the last 20 years. And I cannot believe people hate this movie. <laughs> so the unrated cut, I don't know how different it is. I'm hoping it's just extended kills that I haven't seen yet. But regardless of whether this is the same thing as what I already saw, or whether it be something different, and I have looked that other one up. It doesn't have unrated written on the one that I saw on Amazon Prime and whatever. So I don't know which version I saw. Whatever I saw, I loved it. And I hope that both of the versions are close enough, just with more extreme gore in the unrated cut, that I can see it and really delve into it. There's some decent special features on here, too. I don't know how long they are, but you know, hopefully the behind-the-scenes stuff will be cool. Um, three alternate endings. That should be interesting, too. But I loved this remake. I could not believe how great this was, and to me, how much of a massive improvement it was over the original because of all the inclusion of gore. The original film doesn't really have much of that. But this was a blast, dude. I cannot believe people do not like that movie. That's insane to me. I can't believe slasher fans don't love it. I think a lot of it's that misguided nonsense of, oh, well, I love the original, so the new one's an insult to that original. And I agree, this one's different enough that it should have probably been called something else and just had references to Black Christmas original, but, dude, this was one hell of a fun film, and I recommend it highly. All right, here's one that I'm going to review very soon. This is the 1979 slasher classic from Full Moon Features, and uh, I saw this last year for the first time. I loved it deeply. And I bought this thing here not knowing what it was. <laughs> this is Taurus Trap. But look at this humongous case, man. It's actually themed after a VHS tape, which is pretty cool. This poster always freaked me out when I was, when I was a kid, but I always confused it with The Fun House from Toby Hooper. And I saw Fun House first, and I hated it deeply. So I thought I'd already seen this film, too. And I just kept putting it off and putting it off, and I finally watched this. Let me tell you, if you're afraid of mannequins or anything like that, this movie will creep you out. I just showed this movie to my mom for the first time ever. She had never seen it about two weeks ago. And she even said this is one of the most scary unknown slashers to her that she's never heard of as a massive fan, and it creeped the hell out of her. We both loved it. It's a blast every time. Matter of fact, if you get this version of the movie, it actually comes with an action figure of one of the characters that I love, who's kind of the main guy trying to help out the kids a little bit, whose car breaks down. <clears throat> right here. How cool is that? It's a little figure, man. It's a little figure. It's so cool. But uh, it looks like one of those uh, reaction figures that they were putting out at like Barnes and Nobles and stuff for like different movie series. But the mannequins and stuff that come to life in this film, there's a reason for that. Um, 
the killer in this movie is telekinetic. So he controls these things and he can make them do stuff to try to freak out his victims. Look at this thing, man. This is the killer wearing a random mask and a wig of somebody. But this is the kind of mannequin that he created. That, uh, dude, it's so creepy you have no idea. If you have not seen this, you need to watch it. Definitely going to be probably the next entry on my hidden horror segment of my channel. Uh, because that playlist is based on things that I love that I never hear people talk about, never heard people talk about. Taurus Trap is one of those ones I recommend to everybody. And to be honest with you, it's not really even bloody. There's not really any kind of blood in it. Um, it's a lower budget slasher at that time, and it is so damn good. People don't realize how good that movie is. All right, let's get on to the Valentine's Day stuff here. Uh, first and foremost, I'll kind of show you more of a thriller movie in a four-pack of movies I've never seen before. Maybe some of these will be something I talk about on the channel, but I kind of doubt it. My mom recommended a movie to me um, right around Christmas break, and I was sick during Christmas, so I had a lot of time just to sit and watch movies. Once I had that three- or four-day bump where I was so sick that I was like in a fever dream, I was awake one hour, and then I would like sleep for three. My wife was sick too. But one of those days during Christmas break or right after it, I watched a movie my mom recommended to me because she knows I'm a huge Ray Liotta fan. He's one of my top ten actors of all time. Um, she recommended a movie with Kurt Russell and Ray Liotta in it from like the 90s that I'd never heard of or the 2000s or something. It's called Unlawful Entry, and I loved it. I can't wait to talk about that here on the channel. It is more of like a, a thriller, but this channel can have thrillers discussed on it too. It kind of goes hand in hand with horror a lot of the time. Um, you know, it's going to be hard to talk about something like Phone Booth with Colin Farrell because people are not going to accept that as a horror movie, but to me, it's absolutely terrifying, and I love it, and it's great. But Unlawful Entry has a lot of horror elements to it, too, that I think you'll really dig, so hopefully you'll tune in for whenever I review something like that. But this is in a four-pack with uh, Executive Decision with Kurt Russell, Soldier with Kurt Russell, and uh, Tequila Sunrise with Kurt Russell. I don't know what any of those things are. I don't know what they are supposed to be. <laughs> I guess that uh, they all have decent above average reviews and um, scores on IMDb and stuff, so hopefully they're good. But Unlawful Entry kicked so much ass, and uh, I asked my wife, I was like, hey, I would love to get that for Valentine's Day. She found this four pack, it's like the only four pack with the movie in it, basically, that I could find, and it was like six bucks. And I was like, holy shit, it's great, it's a great deal. She also got me a copy of Employee of the Month, the Dane Cook and Jessica Simpson. I love that film. Just had to tell you that I got a copy of it finally for my collection after being a fan of it forever. I used to watch it so much, dude. It's one of those movies like Grandma's Boy, those 2000s comedies that I just love. I love them. Uh, this film right here is another one she got me too. It is starring Daniel Radcliffe and Mr. James McAvoy. It's a film that I saw on vacation with my wife in Tennessee years ago, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it as a huge Frankenstein fan. This movie is called the Victor Frankenstein. This is super underrated. This is super underrated, and I loved it. It's kind of kind of a comedy borderline, but it was a blast. Everything about it that I wanted it to be, it was a blast. I got some good surprises in here. Definitely going to be something on the hidden horror segment of the channel at some point. I don't know when I'll rewatch this. I want to very soon, but I just don't know when it's going to happen. I've been kind of busy, but I love this. Definitely a big recommendation for me if you haven't seen it before. All right, now we move on to Pawn Shop Goodwill Hall stuff. Um, I guess I'll show you this thing I picked up from a local store that I love quite a bit. Um, this is a remake I saw in theaters that I loved when, it was, when I was younger, when it was brand new. And I've gotten older, I've seen a lot of other stuff over the years, and it kind of changed my opinion on it. You know, I was about 11 when this movie came out. I had never seen a movie like it. I had never heard the urban legend that the original film from 1979 had spawned off. But... Um, I always liked this remake. I recently rewatched it. I plan on reviewing it for you as well. I still think it's pretty decent. Uh, it's above average to me, but not by much. And that film is What a Stranger Calls. It has Katie Cassidy in it. She's not the main chick, and that was a terrible mistake. But she's good uh, from Arrow, Supernatural, different stuff, Nightmare on Elm Street's remake. This is basically about a young lady who's babysitting two sick kids when uh, she believes somebody's broken into the rich people's house she stays in. Now, I saw like 20 minutes of the original film from 79, back in the day, when I was a kid. Mind you, when I was a kid is what I'm telling you. And I thought it was boring as hell when I rented it. So I took it out. I never finished the film, never watched past that first 20 minutes. It bored the hell out of me. Never saw its 90s sequel. But uh, this remake, I've always had kind of a soft spot in my heart. It's one of those movies like Alien vs. Predator. I haven't seen Alien vs. Predator in forever, 
but I have this nostalgia towards it and this love towards it deep down inside of me because I saw it in theaters with my mom at uh, midnight showing basically by the time too. Uh, early release and when a stranger calls it was kind of like that too this is one of the earliest thrillers I ever remember seeing and I've always had a soft spot like I said for it but um, it, it's cool for what it is it's a pretty solid little flick I plan on reviewing all three of those movies at some point I'm surprised we haven't had a remake of that yet again you know I feel like it's coming down the pipeline again Hollywood is struggling so it's probably gonna happen all right <clears throat> Here is some pawn shop stuff I guess I'll jump to next. Um, this one I just rewatched the other day, about two days ago, and uh, it's a movie that I loved. I saw it last year for the first time and I reviewed it for this channel. I wish I could have had more of an organization on the channel because this would have been a hidden horrors video. Maybe I'll re-review it at some point in the future. It's too early right now though. This movie is from like 1999 or 2001 or something. It's called Valentine. This movie kicks ass. If you haven't seen it and you love slashers, this has that post-scream feel to it, but I really love it. I think it's got a lot of cool stuff. I wish the killer had a better mask, but everything else about it, I love. It stars Denise Richards, my uh, secret love affair wife, and uh, it's great. I really like this. I cannot believe people hate this movie or that no one ever talked about it. Definitely a contender for the hidden horror segment. In case you care and in case you're keeping count, a lot of this stuff either will be on there or would have been on there at some point. All right, the next one right here, I have a lot of my friends out there like BD Horror and Horror FFA who love this franchise and love this movie. I've never been a hardcore fan of this movie. I've seen it about three or four times in my life and I decided I would go ahead and get a copy of it when I saw it at the pawn shop because I bought like five movies at the pawn shop. They only charge me two bucks because DVDs are so dead, which is sad to me because they're so good. They're fine for what they are. The discs aren't as good as a Blu-ray, obviously, but, you know, I don't mind having DVD. Got this film here, uh, Creep Show, from back in the day. George Romero and Stephen King working together. Stephen King's in the movie for, like, the middle segment. And I have, again, I love the poster for Creep Show. I love a lot of things about Creep Show. I love that EC Comics throwback feel to it. But, dude... I've just never clicked with this movie. Matter of fact, I think my favorite thing of Creep Show ever has been probably the newer TV show from Shudder. Some of it. Some of it. Not all of it. Not most of it, but some of it. The first season I thought was really, really good. Second season had like a half good season, half bad season. Season three was fucking terrible. And season four kind of redeemed it for the most part for me. Not so much my friends, but for me mainly. I thought that... Uh, Creep Show's original film was kind of boring to me. Maybe I didn't understand it, though. I haven't seen the film in like 10 years, but when I was younger, I watched it three or four times, and like I said, just never was a dedicated obsessee over this movie. So I hope this time around it's a change-up for me. I'm a big enough horror fan, I figure I might as well have this in my collection, too, but if I don't like it, I'm probably going to get rid of it. Uh, it's one of those movies like Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat I recently rewatched during Halloween. Not a fan. Still. <laughs> Never saw Trick or Treat more than once until last year. I still don't like it. <laughs> just, I don't. I've just never been a fan of it at all. Um, but that's just me. Just throwing that controversial hot take out there in the middle of my horror movie haul segment on my channel. And these two films I picked up last weekend at a Goodwill. Um, again, like $2 for this DVD. Yeah, $2 for this, and I think like 50 cents for this VHS tape I picked up to end off the video. I'll show you that in a moment. This uh, DVD I picked up is one that I've never seen, but I'm a huge fan of the remake from 2021, I think. We're about to get another one, too. This film was called King Kong vs. Godzilla. Now, again, I never really got a response in my uh, kind of channel update video I did about two days ago about what you guys would like with the channel. And whether you would like specifically Godzilla movie reviews at some point, because I kind of consider them horror films and creature features in that respect. Not just kaiju movies. And I'm not really sure if I want to do that, because when I look back at older Godzilla that's not, uh, let, let's say, post-original movie, I'm not a fan of them, to be honest with you. They, they look like shit. I just have no interest in them. I think it's called the Showa era, I believe is what it's called. Never been a hardcore Godzilla guy. Matter of fact, my favorite of all of them is the 2014 Gareth Edwards movie. I know it sounds insulting, but it's true. Haven't seen Minus One yet. I hope it's good, too, whenever I get a chance to watch it. Um, depending on whether that film is as creepy and horrific as people tell me, I might review it for the channel. But the original Gojira, 
I don't think there's any getting around the fact that it is a horror movie. It's a creature feature and it deserves to be talked about. But the rest of the series, I don't really know what to think of it. Is it horror? Is it a creature feature? Would you guys like to see reviews of that? Let me know down below. But I like Godzilla vs. King Kong, the remake, and I wanted to see the original, even though I've heard this is pretty bad. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> it took two iconic monsters, had them fight together, and uh, King Kong looks like shit in this movie. From the pictures on the back and stuff, he looks fucking horrible. He looks like the, the, the ape that you see from Spongebob a couple of times in the older episodes. But anyway, King Kong vs. Godzilla. I think it's 1964 or something, maybe that's what it looks like shit. I'm not a 60s fan, so that could very much affect my enjoyment of it, but we'll see. The final movie here that I have is one that I saw in theaters when I was very young. I think it was, it says 2000, 2001, so I would have been about six years old, maybe five. I think I was closer to five, because this would have been like a summertime release. Um, this is a movie that, when I saw it, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, the next year or so after that part of my life, I started watching things like Halloween with Michael Myers. I don't know how much I could have matured within two years that uh, I would have really <laughs> not been affected by Michael Myers. We've been scared to death of this. Maybe it was the theme song. I don't know. Halloween is very magical. It really draws you into that movie because the way Carpenter made it. This little film, though, I have a feeling is going to suck ass when I go to rewatch it, but I'm probably going to go ahead and just uh, indulge myself and review this very soon. For the channel whenever i rewatch it feels like a summertime kids horror movie and yes it is a kids horror film the little vampire this movie for whatever reason it scared the shit out of me there was a couple of jump scares i remember that were burned into my brain uh, particularly involving this best friend vampire kid for a kid that wants to be a vampire and uh, this is the kid from Stuart Little, by the way. Um, Stuart Little, I always liked. I think I saw both of the first two. I don't think I ever saw three, which was like a cartoon straight-to-DVD movie. But the first two I always liked. It was weird seeing Dr. House in there. But Little Vampire, I don't know why it scared me so bad, but my mom still laughed the other day when I sent her a picture of this and said, hey, look what I picked up in Goodwill, because I never see this movie around ever and never hear people talk about it. Um, I had to get it. It's a clamshell case, too. I love clamshells. Um... I'm hoping this is good. We shall see if it's any good. I doubt it's going to be. There's probably a reason this is forgotten and never talked about. But there was something about movies and children's horror at that time in the world that maybe this could feel like a shitty Goosebumps episode. Maybe. In a good way. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But New Line are the ones who put this out. And like I said, I saw it in theaters. And it freaked me the fuck out when I was a kid. I know it's not going to do that, obviously, as an adult. But I can't wait to see it. <laughs> because I just want to shit all over this movie that terrified me as a child. Um, I don't know why, but I remember jump scares. That's all I remember. Anyway, that is the horror movie haul for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on everything in this collection here. Let me know your thoughts on uh, the Kurt Russell films and Unlawful Entry and the slasher stuff and the stuff that you would recommend to other people if they haven't seen any of the stuff that I've talked about and recommended myself here from this collection. But with all that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching and listening to me ramble for so long. Sorry for such an extended long video. I've been collecting this stuff up for so long that I thought I would go ahead and get it out of the way and show it to you. So as I get more stuff in the future, more horror movie DVDs or VHS tapes or Blu-rays and so on and so on, I will make more of these videos, but I kind of want to build them up because I don't buy horror movies as often. Horror films, I pretty much own everything that I want. <laughs> Everything that I want, I pretty much have. And every once in a while, I find something like Little Vampire or something like a new Godzilla film that I've never seen that I go ahead and pick up. So, just wanted to give you a heads up on that. It probably won't be as common as it used to be back in the day. Um, I don't really buy horror games anymore. I pretty much own all of the ones I can get. There are some that I would die to get, <laughs> but I'll never be able to see them in person. But the rest of this stuff... I hope you had a good time checking out the video with me. Let me know your thoughts on everything. What did you pick up recently if you picked up anything since Christmas, horror-wise? I'd love to hear all of that down below. And again, I have my list of things I want to get sometime, but I had to buy a new phone recently, so uh, that was within like the last two weeks. So I'm trying to kind of hold off, and I went to the pawn shop and spent a couple of bucks on some DVDs, and that's about it. So I've been super careful about that. I'm trying to save money back up. Um, after a job change up too, so that's been great. Thank God I'm out of management. I will never do management again. Fuck management. Anyway, how do you guys, uh, what, what did you pick up recently, I guess is what I want to say again. Let me know everything you think down below and all the stuff you got. I'd love to hear all of it and love to discuss it all with you too. 
Check out for some more reviews, and uh, God bless you guys. Goodbye.